Yeah, stupid fitness posts. That's that's what we got going on today. Doing doing a little bit of a. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, a little bit of a latte this morning. And today we're going to talk about stupid fitness posts that seems to be a plague amongst the interwebs and social media. Unfortunately, people would rather cut and paste bad information that either they're ignorant or too stupid to verify that information of whether it's true or not, and just vomit it all over and pretend that it's their own. So what you end up with is somebody who obviously can't think, and then they look stupid at the same time by stealing a post from somebody else who was clueless to begin with. Yeah, it's... So we're going to go over this. Now, I did a video on this before, and unfortunately, I mean, I covered it because I thought the person actually wrote the post. And boom, that was a done deal you know, about testosterone goes through the roof with compound exercises and so on and so forth. And uh, then I saw it popping up all over the place. And then, so when I read the post and I looked at the page of the person that posted it and compared their writing style with the writing style of that post, I quickly realized it had, it, it wasn't the same. There are two entirely different things. So you have somebody who stole something cut and paste and put it on their own page with the little emojis, the exact same emojis. Uh, there's that as well. And then just change, you know, put their name at the end or whatever it is. Um, seriously, really, that's what, that's what we're doing these days. And for, this is on over 40 and over 50 fitness pages. So what we're seeing are individuals that are trying to get clout on fitness pages by passing this bullshit off on their own <clears throat> and so we're gonna we're gonna talk about some of this uh, about the post in general so let's go ahead and we'll throw this up here and I'll kind of move to the side a little bit and bros this is amazing because it talks about bro splits prevent you from maximizing testosterone <clears throat> oh, seriously we're, we're gonna start off here um, yeah, we all know testosterone is critical in terms of enhancing protein synthesis and increasing muscle mass. Uh, many overlook your training can potentially increase your testosterone. Increasing your test will build muscle on its own. Bro splits suck for several reasons. This is just one of them. So what, what this person is saying is a bro split is where you work one muscle group per day and then another muscle group the next day and another muscle group the next day, different muscle groups. So you allow rest periods between those muscle groups. And actually the bro split is a pretty good way of working out. You can minimize your time in the gym, you can maximize your intensity and you can grow that muscle group and have enough recovery time to do a different one the next day. And then by the time you roll around, it's it's a pretty good matter of fact a, a lot of people do it a lot of bodybuilders natural bodybuilders the extra supplemented unnatural not natty bodybuilders use bro splits you know a lot of home fitness people use bro splits i've used bro splits and it is a very effective thing so saying that you know bro splits is not an effective way and that this implication that your testosterone cannot be increased by doing bro splits is absolutely wrong. Um, yeah, but we're going to get into that. And there's some other little nuances that this person, whoever wrote this, the original poster, obviously was clueless on. So we're going to continue on. Um, that's why most dudes that do them see little, if any, progress. Okay, now, if you see somebody that does a bro split and doesn't get any progress, there's more than just the routine involved. There's new nutrition. You can have somebody on a push-pull leg routine that is not a bro split, obviously. You do all your pushing exercises uh, during a workout, and then you take a day off or two, and then you do another one where you do all your pull exercises, take a day or two off, and then do your leg exercises, and then you just lather, rinse, and repeat. <coughs> There's different variations of routines besides those two. You can do full body workouts where you can do a full body workout and have every other day off or whatever it is. 
Um, but it's also dependent upon your goals. Now, when this guy says that, you know, you don't see somebody getting progress and it's because they're on a bro split, there's also your nutrition that's involved. If you don't have a good nutrition plan and you don't have enough specifically protein intake, you're not going to build muscle. So it's kind of like building a brick house. You have some mortar, you have some bricks, but if you don't have the bricks, you can't build the house. And that's what protein is. Protein is the amino acids that are the bricks of bodybuilding and building muscle. And so if you don't supply your body with adequate nutrition of anywhere from 0.71 to uh, one gram of uh, protein per pound of body weight, you're not going to gain muscle. You're, you're going to at best maintain or you're going to lose muscle mass because you're not feeding and you're not repairing it, uh, you're not maintaining it. Um, that comes in with recovery and that's the other part that we have is recovery. If you have bad recovery, you're going to minimize your muscle gains or your hypertrophy. And then there's the training. Just because you do a full body workout or a push-pull leg work workout, that doesn't mean that that is superior to a bro split. Now, why is that? Well, there's a lot of the different variables when we're talking about exercise and when you actually do your workout. Let's say you're doing curls. If you're doing a curl and you're just kind of like this and you're, and you're on your phone, which we see a lot of people doing, you're not putting intensity into the workout. <clears throat> you're not lifting 70 to 80, 85 percent of your one rep max, you're not activating the muscle fibers within that muscle to the point of where it, it puts enough stimulus to where you get those micro muscle tears and then during the recovery period with your good nutrition, it builds, repairs and builds more muscles to combat against that stimulus. That's how it is. So if you're not putting intensity into the workout, and I see this every time I go to the gym, and it, and you don't have to be you know putting 110% into your workout every single time, but there's people that I know and I've talked to who are frustrated doing all different types of workouts that are not making progress, and it's because they don't do intensity. They don't have an intensity in their workouts. Uh, they're not squeezing the contraction as they're doing the repetition. They're not doing slow four to six second neg negatives. Uh, they're not doing the explosive move movements up and then contracting for one to two seconds in that slow negative. Um, things that are proven by science to actually promote more muscle protein synthesis or muscle building. So yeah, there's a lot of things that are involved if you're trying to build muscle. There's nutrition, there's recovery, there's the exercise, how you do the exercise. And we're gonna get into some of the other bullshit that this guy gets into. So let's say if you do a full body exercise and you're not intense and you don't work at a capacity that is enough stimulus for, for your muscles, your body is not going to respond and repair and build more muscle regardless of what routine you're on. Yeah, that, that, that's the thing. Uh, and amazing how that happens. Huh. But whoever the original poster was of this didn't take that into consideration because obviously they didn't know about all the different variables that are involved. You know, and then there's even more. Uh, since we're, we were, me and my wife, I mean, we're, we're over 40 by a lot. And it ends up that I belong to over 40 and over 50 fitness pages. So when I see this stuff here and I see this, um, you know, BS that passes off as, ooh, I know what I'm talking about and I've got cloud and, and look at this great post that I did, it obviously shows that these people have no clue about what they're doing. So yeah, it's, uh, and then we get into testosterone. Um, yeah, I, there's partial truths in this post, but it's partial. And it leaves you with the with a wrong impression and come to a conclusion that is absolutely false. He goes, that's why uh, people that do them see little, see little if any, progress. Um, yeah, there's no proof of that. There's proof, actual scientific studies that show that bro splits actually produce muscle hypertrophy as push-pull legs, as full body routine. But again, like if you do a full body routine, there is some considerations that 
you, if you do a full body routine every single day, that you're not going to have enough recovery time between those workouts to allow the body to repair and build more muscle. So there's a little caveat there, but he doesn't want to tell you about that. Or I, I'm assuming it's a guy, the writing style and so on and so forth. And so he goes on large prime movers, increase testosterone and change your body. Uh, isolation and small muscle group exercise don't do dick, especially for beginners. Um, the problem is, again, if we go to scientific studies, such as there's a scientific study that showed if you use a 5 or a 10 pound dumbbell, whatever it is, and you can do sets and reps and all that, it will promote muscle hypertrophy. In other words, it will build muscle. So saying that small muscle groups, when you exercise them or do isolation muscle group exercises, will not produce hypertrophy, especially for beginners, is an absolute lie. Um, your bicep is a small muscle group. Your shoulders are a small muscle group. Um, your calves are a small muscle group. So, you know, and your, your traps and things like that, those are small muscle groups. But you can do isolation exercises, and, and studies have shown that you can produce muscle building in those small muscle groups by doing isolation, isolation exercises. Now, you can also help build during the uh, compound exercises, but if you really want to focus on that weak area, say your biceps, you're going to have to do more volume, you're going to have to do isolation exercises, so that way the other muscles in your body do not rob you of the tension of the activation of those muscle fibers in that muscle group. So, yeah, this person doesn't know dick. Uh, is, is, that's my official comment on that. It says, and then he says, once you have a significant amount of muscle mass, a bro split, and some isolation movements will begin to be effective. <clears throat> please, please, please list the numerous studies and meta-analysis showing this is the case. Because it's not. Um, you know, there... And then he goes on and he makes his claim. This is an old school claim, so this is why I wanted to, to put this out there. Um, he goes on, he says, uh, but if you are less than 200 pounds, I would not use machines, any cables, do any single or leg movements, single leg movements, uh, train less than three muscle groups in a training session and do less than five or more than 10 reps in a set. Olympic lifts less than five. Um, <laughs> Usa, Usa. Okay, let's address these. <laughs> First of all, he says, don't use any machines. This harkens back to the days of when we had, uh, this harkens back to the days of the old school bodybuilders and free weights, and free weights are superior to machines because machines don't uh, provide as much uh, they offer less muscle building than free weights. And, and the big thing back in the day, and you'll still see it or hear about it today, is that, ooh, stabilizers, free weights, you know, use your stabilizer muscles as if that's going to be a huge, gigantic component to gaining muscle. And the fact is, it's not. It's, it's yeah, you use a little bit of different muscles. You've got to balance and, and so on and so forth. But in the grand scheme of things, if I show you somebody who worked out with nothing but free weights, and I showed you somebody who worked out with nothing but machines, you would not be able to tell the difference between their muscle growth if they had good nutrition, good re recovery, and in intense workouts, and so on and so forth. Um, yeah, and there's actual studies, scientific studies that have been shown that free weights and machines, they produce the same amount of muscle hypertrophy. So whoever wrote this bullshit, doesn't know what science has discovered and found and verified as true, you know, with double blind studies and so on and so forth. Don't use any cable machines. Uh, seriously. You know, the clueless, you know, the one eyed man is king in the land of the blind. And this person is obviously is very short sighted because they don't understand how cables work. They don't understand how tension uh, works on muscle activation, and they definitely don't seem to understand gravity. So 
or basic mechanics of the body in that you can be in rest positions and take tension off of your muscles with free weights, whereas with cable machines, you can apply constant tension on that muscle group, which is better for muscle activation and hence hypertrophy. Yeah. Uh, so, for example, if I'm doing a bicep curl, and let me see if I can get it. If I can do a bicep curl and I come up here and my elbow is forward, then the weight is resting on my my joint, which is my wrist, my elbow, and now I have this bone, and then the weight is transferred. It's kind of like a, a waiter or waitress carrying a tray. I can hold this position all day long. So if I keep my, my elbow pointed out, <clears throat> I can hold that weight, and essentially I remove the tension off the bicep. But as soon as I rotate this out and gravity is straight down, now the weight is pulling down. Now I have more activation of that, of that bicep. I need to get a better chair. I got more muscle activation of that bicep, so I get, in, in, in a sense, more activation, more muscle building. So that's the problem with free weights. It's not a big problem, but you just need to be cognizant of that in that you don't go into that rest position. There's also the point of where, you know, we're going to talk about momentum or we're going to throw the weight up and we're going to rely on momentum and unfortunately, we think it's more important to get the weight up, even if we use momentum. But again, that is robbing the tension off of that muscle group. So by saying don't use any cable machines is so short-sighted. I mean, there's ways with free weights that you can keep the tension on there. But cable machines are a great way because they provide constant tension through the entire range of movement. So, for example, if I'm doing an exercise, let me see if I can get this, and say the machine is back here, and I have the cable in my hand, as I bring this up, it's constantly putting pressure. So even if I get in this top position, as I'm curling, I'm still having that, that motion, that, that weight in that direction at a constant rate. So... <clears throat> That does not remove tension from the bicep. It keeps tension on that bicep through the entire range of motion. Now, if I get to a point where I, I curl it up and then it's resting and things like that, then yeah. But if you do the exercise correctly with cable machines, his, poot, his point is mute. Uh, do not do any single arm or leg movements. Well, if I'm trying to get my biceps, then doing a single arm movement can be really beneficial to hypertrophy and building up that small muscle group. <sighs> yeah, and then we go back to the top where he says, but if you're less than 200 pounds, I would not do the following. Um, so everybody that's 199 pounds and less, you shouldn't do these things? That is so absolutely false, it's not even funny. It's, it's, it's almost like he believes that machines or cable machines or, you know, single arm or, or single leg movements do not produce muscle hypertrophy because obviously if you take that, that belief, you're concluding that you're not getting muscle activation if you just exercise one arm. But if you exercise two arms with tension, you're, you're going to get hypertrophy. You're going to get muscle building. <laughs> And that's not, that's not how the body works. If I do a single arm movement and I have muscle activation and I'm doing progressive overload and I, I'm activating all those muscle fibers, guess what? It's going to produce hypertrophy. If I do two arms and I have the same thing, I have intensity, I have weight, progressive overload, it's going to put tension on that muscle group and it's going to produce muscle building MPS. <clears throat> So, yeah, this person has no clue what they're talking about. When you make such an absolute statement such as, if you're, 200, if, if you're less than 200 pounds, I wouldn't do any of this stuff. I'm totally forgetting that science uh, studies have shown that machines build the same amount of muscle as free weights. Uh, and that's dependent upon nutrition, intensity, and so on and so forth. Um, <clears throat> train less than three muscle, I would not train less than three muscle groups in a training session. That's absolutely untrue. Um, because now you're saying that the body is going to respond and not recover because you do less than three muscle groups in a training session. So if I do one muscle group in a training session, and this is kind of the false straw man argument is saying, well, you know, bro splits, you do one muscle group, uh, you know, per workout. 
uh, wouldn't do that because, uh, you know, it's not beneficial to building muscle. That is absolutely untrue. Because now you're saying that the body has this mechanism or the switch that says, oh, I'm only, I'm only working one body part, one muscle group. So no matter how much weight I lift and no matter how much tension I put on there, intensity, uh, progressive overload, we're not going to repair the damaged muscle and we're not going to build new muscle fibers. That is absolute bullshit. And that your body only recognizes when you do three, uh, three or more. That's absolutely untrue. Now, I think whoever wrote this vomit uh, got some things confused because there have been studies that say, okay, what's the optimal number of sets and reps for muscle hypertrophy? And through the numerous studies that I've read, it ranges from three to five sets and, you know, again, that's kind of dependent upon muscle groups, your experience level, and so on and so forth, your age, because age has a lot of different variables, and we'll get into that. But, yeah, obviously this person doesn't know about any of that. And uh, it just makes you cringe, because now it's saying, you know, well, the body shuts down the automatic repair and build function when the body is damaged, if there's three or less or two, one or two, but three, it suddenly wakes up and clicks in. That, that's, that's, not, that's not how it works. But there have been studies that show that multiple sets were produced more muscle hypertrophy over single sets. So for the people that are out there that are saying, you know, oh, Mike Metzer, one set, uh, one set per body part, 30 minutes a week, three times a week. Oh, you can build a lot of muscle. Um, no, studies show that multiple sets produce more muscle hypertrophy than a single set at 100% intensity and uh, capacity of weight, you know, of 100% of your one rep max. The reason that, that uh, certified fit fitness instructors and sports scientists with PhDs and all this stuff, they recommend working at a 70% of your one rep max, maybe up to 80, 85, and keep it within that range because it's, it has been shown scientifically that you continue to build muscle. But when you get into those higher ranges, what they see is a higher level or instance of injury. So to keep us within that band of excellence and out of the injury zone, because you know the harder and heavier that you go, people are more prone to getting injured and that's recorded. And then anything less, you're, you're diminishing the amount of muscle hypertrophy. So we're gonna stay within that band of excellence. Yeah, um, so this person is obviously clueless. Uh, in terms of training, this is where he makes some absolute statements. Uh, full body workouts are the most effective way to train. Nope. Absolutely not. You can do a full body workout, but if your nutrition is crap, it doesn't matter if you do a full body workout. Uh, you do a full body workout and you don't do intense workouts and put the appropriate amount of tension on the muscle group, you're not going to experience hypertrophy. If you're just going through checking the numbers and you're reading your phone and, and doing your socials and, and, and you know, you don't put any effort into it, you're not going to get a return. Magic muscles aren't going to magically appear on your body because you just show up and, and lift a five five pound dumbbell and and you know it's kind of like me lifting my coffee cup. That is not enough stimulus to produce the damage that is needed to repair muscle fibers and build more muscle fibers to combat against that continued stimulus. Uh, yeah, and you know the most effective way. Most effective way, and from what I've read from numerous studies, probably about 100 studies or more, is that everything that I've read on muscle hypertrophy, what we end up seeing is that there needs to be intensity, there needs to be that progressive overload, there needs to be sets and reps to failure, you know, within reason, uh, reps to failure, you know, where you leave one or two in the tank, and of course, if you go to failure, you're going to engage more muscle fibers because you're more time under tension. Of course, volume, there's the aspect of volume. Uh, there's so many different variables that making such blatant stereotypical statements is just like, that's a huge red flag right there. Kind of like when he says, if you're less than 200 pounds, don't do these things, you know, or, um, but it gets worse. He goes, uh, this is due to and he goes, it's the most efficient way to train due to the testosterone releasing properties of compound movements. Um, you can do compound movements in a push-pull leg 
exercise routine. You can do push. Uh, you can do compound movements in a bro split when you do a workout. So saying that what he's saying is that you're going to get some extra benefits from testosterone because you do a full body workout that have compound movements, but he neglects to tell you that you can do compound movements in these other routines as well. So now you were faced with the problem of saying, you know, well, wait a second. Um, so now you're telling me that the body knows the difference between a full body workout and it'll accept all the stimulus and you'll produce muscle growth. But when you're doing a bro split or a push pull leg, that your body just says, oh, this isn't the most efficient way to build muscle. So we're going to switch all this, this off and we're, gonna, we're not going to respond and repair and build muscle like we did with the other routine. No, you're, that's not how the body works. The, the, the body is going to respond to stimulus and damage and it's going to repair it in however it happens. So again, this, this person is just monumentally stupid. And we're going to talk about testosterone. Oh, yeah, because he brought that up and testosterone, testosterone, blah, blah, blah. And again, this is more misinformation of what we see. Uh, this is not debatable. This is scientifically, scientifically factual. Uh, this is preposterous. Because uh, there's so much information in what he said, but there are pieces of this that we see in the scientific studies, but it's being taken way out of context. And so when you try to take something out of its context and apply it into a context that it wasn't meant to be in, it becomes false information. So just because something is written down and you see this one sentence in something and then you try to apply it to your own little pet peeve thing, and it was taken out of the context of the study itself. You know, it's not the exact same training routine that was being, you know, seen in the study, but you pulled that out to try to support your routine, your full body routine. Uh, it's just asinine to see I, how stupid people are. And so, you know, we're going we're gonna to continue on. Uh, let's take a look at, what is that, that it? Uh, oh, yeah, here it is. This is... This, now, he goes on, and we're going to talk about this. He says, if you bench press, this is a testosterone-releasing exercise. You better get your hip waders, because this shit's going to get deep. Back and bys. If you do pull or deadlift variations, those are testosterone-increasing exercises. Legs, if you squat, again, it increases your testosterone. If you military press, that is going to increase testosterone. So in a week, at best, you do five exercises that potentially increase testosterone. So, and then he says, uh, then he says, let's look at one of my workouts. This implies to me that he's trying to sell a routine and he's hyping it up with all this misinformation. Um, but the other, what we, what we see, or at least what I see with this previous statement, you know, the bench press, the pull-up or deadlift uh, variations, the squat, the leg press, and so on and so forth, military press, those all produce uh, increased testosterone. Um, as if in his full body routine, they produce testosterone. But if you do it in a push-pull leg or if you do it in a bro split, your body recognizes that and is not going to produce testosterone. That's not how that works. You can do all of these exercises that he mentions can be done in push-pull leg or in a bro split. Again, it's the level of stupidity is monumental in this individual. So then he says, let's look at one of my workouts. Hang clean, testosterone through the roof. Uh, hex deadlift, testosterone through the roof. So is a regular deadlift. It does not make your testosterone go through the roof and you only have to do, I don't know, overhead press, testosterone through the roof. Chin up, testosterone through the roof. Incline barbell bench, um, testosterone through the roof. Uh, weighted dips, tricep through the roofs. Um, as if non-weighted dips and you just do your body weight that that doesn't increase your testosterone. Uh, you see what I'm saying? It's kind of like, well, wait a second. There, there are some problems here because science have shown, has shown otherwise. So in one of my workouts, I have more testosterone-increasing exercises than a bro split would provide in a week. 
So that's absolutely untrue because if you look at a bro split, um, you do all those exercises. You're going to exercise all of those things in your bro split workout, and you're going to do usually bro splits. Splits work on the premise of doing three to five sets per muscle group. So you're going to get max amount of muscle activation when you do those at different angles, doing different exercises with these included. You know, uh, but the, the the huge thing is saying testosterone through the roof. So many times, testosterone through the roof, testosterone through the roof. So uh, that's the reason, there is a reason I look the way I do. And it's interesting because in the post that I found for this, has a picture attached to it, and obviously the guy is doing steroids. So much misinformation. We don't even know if the picture of the guy who is obviously on testosterone, if this is his post or somebody made this post and just attached that picture to try to get some clout and pass it on and whatever. But it's just wrong on so many levels. Now, the question that we should be asking what is testosterone through the roof? Because here's how the human body works. Your body produces testosterone. It's usually higher in the morning, and then it kind of ebbs and sways through the day and so on and so forth. But it, it overall, it, it maintains a homeostasis, a fairly level, again, it's greater in the morning than it is uh, during the rest of the day, but pretty much it's level. In other words, your body's going to try to keep at, at a, a normal level, a, a level of homeostasis. And then what happens is when you do exercise, and this has been proven by scientific studies, is that when you do exercises, like he said, but then there's also other exercises that he doesn't mention, like sprinting or running or uh, high-intensity training workouts and so on and so forth, and when you do those activities, that also raises your testosterone. Now, the question, is it through the roof? What quantifies as being through the roof? You know, are we talking... A thousand percent? Are we talking five thousand percent? You know, when you tell me something is through the roof in regards to its increase, I think of like Bitcoin when it went <coughs> from pennies to sixty, a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, that is through the roof. You're getting massive returns on your investment. Um, you know, a uh, thousand, two thousand, you know, twenty thousand percent gains or whatever. That is through the roof. That is what comes to mind when you say through the roof. But what do the scientific studies say? Now, if you do a search on PubMed, which I highly recommend a lot of people do, you will see that there are numerous studies, and it's hard to find this information because it's it has to be uh, exercise. Or, or testosterone, the effects of exercise, somewhere around that vein. And you'll see exercise like running and sprinting and endurance athletes. You'll find some weight training stuff on there. And of course, the compound exercises into where scientists have tested the amount of testosterone that is increased. Now, the studies that I have looked at, and there's, there's multiple studies, I'd say 10, 7 to 10, somewhere around there, um, there's a range in which the percentage of that person's testosterone, or they found a, an increase, and it ranges from 7% or 7.1% all the way up to 21 point something percent, and various things in between. So we have a low of 7%, then we have a high of like 21%, and then there's all that that is in between. So that's not through the roof. I would think if it's through the roof, you would at least be doubling your testosterone. It wouldn't be a, a single digit increase in your testosterone. It would be more than 20%. Through the roof, I'm thinking, you know, 100% increase on testosterone. Now, this leads me to believe that this idiot says that, okay, all this here, that if he does uh, his hang clean, and he does his hex deadlift, and he does his overhead press, and he does his chin up, and he does his incline barbell bench, and he does weighted dips, all of those things will produce, what, 20% each, and then he tries to add that together of, of, you know, and maybe that's how he's coming to the conclusion that it's through the roof because it's, it's cumulative. No, 
that's not how that works. And unfortunately, there, there's a limit to how much your testosterone raises. Now, this comes into the situation of where, the, what testosterone is he talking about? And you might be thinking, what, there's more than one? And absolutely there is. Um, if we don't understand how the human body works, when we have somebody that just uses some words and doesn't understand or put it within the context of what is being talked about, then we can make this generalization, oh, testosterone goes up, that's good. Obviously, I'm going to build more muscle. But when you get down to the details, and remember, the devil is in the details. You know, you see the movie Crossroads and, you know, where the devil's involved and making deals and you don't read the fine print. And, you know, the, the hero of the story is like, oh, I'm going to die or whatever. And then there's some loophole in, in, the, in the details that allows that person to overcome the deal they made with the devil or whatever. And it works out. Um, Stevie, Stevie Ray Vine was awesome in uh, the guitar solos of Crossroads with Ralph Macchio, Macchio and, and I can't remember the other actor's name. But uh, yeah, it was kind of cheesy, but it was, it was a good story. I enjoyed it. But I digress. Uh, your testosterone, your body has different testosterone levels. There's actually two. You have total testosterone and then you have free testosterone. And total testosterone, your body uses... For a lot of different functions, it's used for your hormones, and, and it's, it is wicked complicated. But when that raises due to exercise, is that what is responsible directly for muscle building? No, it is not. Because only 1% to 2% of your total testosterone is free testosterone, and that free testosterone is what is important for the muscle building process. That is what is actually applied to cells. That's for rebuilding. That's for, for skeletal. Uh, that's for muscle building and hypertrophy and so on and so forth. So when you say that your testosterone goes through the roof, which obviously it doesn't, let's say it, it, it goes to let's just take somewhere in the middle and say it raises 10%, your free testosterone, that does not mean that your free testosterone is going to raise as well. Now, the other thing that we need to take into consideration is, and ask the question is, how long is that raise in testosterone? And does it go into the recovery period time, which is when your body actually repairs and builds muscle? So if you do the exercise, people, oh, I'm going to the gym, I'm going to, I'm going to build some muscle. And it's like, no, that's, that's, that's not how it works. You put stimulus on your muscles by doing the exercises, and then after you exercise, it's that 24 to 48 hours afterwards, that is that recovery period of when muscles are actually repaired and built. And this is dependent upon free testosterone. Here's another important thing. You can have a high total testosterone number, but you can have a very low or deficient free testosterone number. And it's like, whoa. So, so in other words, you can be a person that can exercise and it raises their total testosterone, but your free testosterone can be deficient or zero, and it, or it doesn't see the same percentage increase that your total testosterone experience. So in other words, just because your total testosterone went up 21.04%, that does not mean that your free testosterone is going to reciprocate and go up 21.04%. It doesn't work that way. It's not a locked ratio of where, you know, here it is, and then as you go up, it's going to go up or it's going to go down. That's not how it works. There's, there's, and, and, you know, this is the bullshit that we see is that people don't understand how this works. So just because you have a raise in your total doesn't mean that your free is going to raise as well. And again, your body's going to limit that to 1% to 2% of your total testosterone is going to be free testosterone. And even then, it might not raise correspondingly. So, um, yeah. And so he talks about this. This is the reason the way I look the way I do. No, the reason that you look the way you do is because you're doing exercises regardless of whether it's full body or bro split or PPL or some variation of those things. 
and you're putting stimulus on those muscles to activate the muscle fibers. You get micro muscle tears, and then as the, the muscle stretches and all that stuff, and you go into recovery, your body's going to respond to that stimulus. It's going to repair those muscle fibers and build them up, and then it's going to build more muscle fibers because it sees the need because of the stimulus and not because it's a full body workout versus, oh, we're not going to repair a damaged muscle and build more muscle fibers with all things being equal if this is a bro split. That, that's not how the body works. So when we see stuff like this, it's just absolutely as, asinine. Uh, I see you training your ass off. Knowing how much more effective your training could be really bothers me. Uh, what really bothers me is you don't know what you're talking about. And this, this highlights exactly what I've seen over social media and over in health and fitness. I've seen it in other industries as well, is that people will latch onto something that they see and then they'll have these blinders and they say, well, this worked for me, so it must be the only answer. So everything else is, is, is lower than what I'm doing. I'm doing what is superior because look at the results I've got. There's, you know, I tried this other way, but really, did you look into all the variables? Did you make sure that you're doing progressive overload? Did you actually give enough recovery time? Did you, was your protein intake high enough? Uh, so on and so forth. There's so many different variables involved. How did you do the exercise? How did you work out? Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, but people will put blinders on and it's kind of like with the nutritional diets. People will, will find a diet and they'll say, oh, carnivore is best or keto is best or low, uh, low carb, uh, high fat, whatever variation. There's like 40 different variations of diets. Well, there's more than that. But I mean, I read a study that talked about 40 different diets and how they tested them to see if there was any significant difference between those. They found that there wasn't. So in other words, they all produced the same benefit in regards to weight loss. And that was the topic was weight loss, so I don't want you to confuse this with muscle building. But again, the nutrition plans brought about the same results. And of course, there were some variances, but they concluded that there was no significant difference between all of these diets. So there wasn't one that stood out and said, oh, well, keto is the best, you know, or carnivore is the best, and, and thus it leaves everybody behind and us, us royalty do, do, do what I do because look at what I did. No, that, that, that is not how scientific testing works. You found something that clicked that you have a personal preference for and then it just made sense and you dedicated to being motivated and doing this over a long period of time and guess what? You lost the weight, built the muscle, whatever it is. But that's why other people can do the same thing with a different diet plan, get the same results, and now you're faced with a problem, well, wait a second, if this worked for you and you say this is the only way to do it, then how did this person get the same results with the diet plan that wasn't yours or the one that you're on? Again, we're, people don't understand, they don't see what's going on and understand that there's more than one way to skin a cat. And really what it comes down to when we're talking about diets and nutrition, uh, losing body fat and so on and so forth, it really, you have a plethora of different plans to choose from. And if you find the one that you identify with, that clicks with you, that makes sense and it's easy for you, you know, for some people, the carnivore it just, it just doesn't work. It's too time consuming. It's too expensive. It just doesn't, you know, uh, you know, I feel run down because, you know, people find out that they have other nutritional needs as well. Uh, and they do better with, you know, maybe 40% uh, protein, 40% carbs, and 20% fats, or some variation thereof. Or maybe it's a little bit more high fat, or a little bit lower, lower fat. And it's, it's the needs of the body. So if that clicks with them, and they feel good on it, and they continue, and they can get the similar results, you cannot say that what you do is superior to all those other nutrition plans, or diets. <sighs> So, and uh, yeah, so when this person says that, you know, they see these people, I see you training your ass off, and I, I see a lot of people in the gym working out, and in all honesty, in the years, in the, the many years that I've been working out, I don't see a lot of people working their ass off. So I got to call bullshit on that. Maybe in the gym that he goes to, maybe there's more dedicated people, but generally... 
I don't see a lot of people working their ass off. I've been to 24 hour fitness. I've been to Gold's Gym. I've been, you know, Gold's Gym, there's usually a few more people that do intense workouts, but usually for the average person, they go to the gym, they do their routine, they exercise, you know, they do maybe 50, 60, maybe 70%. And then, you know, okay, oh, I worked out and, and however long it was. And that's great. They're maintaining their physique. Uh, and they're, you have good heart health. They're doing cardio, you know, three to, uh, three times a week, you know, or up to 150 minutes a week. Uh, they exercise, you know, three to five times a week and, and they're healthy and they're good. They're, they've got functional mobility. It, you know, they're reaping the benefits of that exercise program. But as far as training your ass off, you don't have to train your ass off every single day. And this is another thing that bothers me when somebody says something like this is that you don't know what other people are going through. So for example, uh, I had a shoulder injury. I've had back injuries thanks to the military, appreciated Uncle Sam, and I have chronic pain. So there are things that I cannot do, and so I'll do lighter weights, but then I'll make up for that by you know doing more muscle activation. I'll try doing more contractions, slower negatives, and so on and so forth with perhaps some lighter weights. So the people don't know that I'm injured or I have a limited capability. And the same thing with other people. To make such an absolute statement of saying, oh, you, you know, you're training your ass off. On Conversely, you see people that aren't training their ass off. You don't know if they're injured. You don't know if they're just maintaining. You don't know what their goals are. Uh, maybe they're just having, you know, a, a crappy month and they're just kind of going through the motions, but they're still showing up at the gym. Again, I find it lacking. Uh, this guy says, cut out the bodybuilding bullshit. Throw the bro split in the trash and start training like a man. Ooh, now we're, now we're going to get some toxic, some toxicity here claiming that if you don't do, a, and what this guy proposes is a full body workout. And if you don't do a full body workout, you're not a real man. Um, well, Johnny, I'm, I'm a man and... Uh, First, you talk about testosterone and building muscle and, and how all that's important. Then you come around, then you say, throw the bodybuilding bullshit in the trash. Hmm. Yeah, let, let's, just, let's just throw shade on an entire industry and things that people do to remain healthy and still have a goal and build muscle. And so, I, training like a man, training like a man. Let me see if I can find find some stuff here. Training like a man. Hmm. No, 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 no. I, I, that's not training like a man. Uh, let's see. What else? What else can we find? Uh, no, nope, training like a man. I use mainly machines. So that, and according to him, you shouldn't use machines because they're they're inferior. Um, yeah, it's it, it's just interesting, you know. And uh, yeah, if that's it's the only one that can defeat you is you. And if you know, I mean, to say somebody is not a man because they don't do a full body workout routine, there are more people that do bro splits and push pull leg routines than those who do full body workouts like you. And so, let me see if I can find a real good one. Yeah, but you, you get the idea. Uh, I've actually had people tell me that, you know, in conversation and saying, you know, well, people that, uh, people that uh, uh, use machines, they get inferior results, blah, blah, blah. You know, they're kind of the free weight only type of group. And uh, yeah, that's, 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 that's not how that works. And it's funny because they're like, oh, how much do you bench, you know? And it's because I'm like one of the bigger guys in the gym. I'm 6'2", I'm 250 pounds, and, and I carry some good weight. Uh, and I'm 57. And so I get some younger guys. I go to a military, I go to a gym on a military base. And so, I'll, you know, people will talk with me and stuff. And through a couple of conversations that I've had, it's like, you know, all oh, those people doing those machines, you know, they're the, they should really be able to, you know, to, to do free weights. And, and, you know, that's where the real growth is. And it's like guys that are, you know, they got a decent build. It's, it's not anything to write home about. But then it's like, well, how much do you bench, bro? And it's, 
you know, actually, I don't say that, you know, in that vernacular, but basically, how much do you bench? And, you know, you're big, and, oh, you know, I bet you it's a lot. And it's like, no, I don't do bench at all. I do machines. I do hammer strength incline press, which you put on, you know, plates onto that machine, and then it puts you on that guided position. Uh, I do some dumbbell work, but yeah, I don't do flat bench. I don't do decline on a flat, on a bench. I don't do incline on a bench with a barbell. And the reason is, is like, you know, this guy's like, what do you mean? And it's like, no, I, I don't do flat bench. My shoulders don't like it. And what I like is machines because when I do a flat bench, I am limited in the amount of weight that I can put on there. And then now I have this, yeah, I use some stabilizers, stabilizer muscles to keep the weight up. Okay, as I'm doing the exercise, whoop de doo but on a hammer strength plate machine, what I can end up doing is I can put more weight on there. There's the increased safety factor and I can do more progressive overload onto the muscles that I'm working on those machines versus doing it free weights. And there's been situations where when I was doing flat bench with barbells and I call somebody over to spot me, you know, you're, you're at the whim of whoever's there. And if the person can't lift, you know, 250, 275 or 300 pounds and you're, they're going to spot you. Yeah. That kind of puts some doubt, but if I can overload that hammer strength plate machine and I can put 270 or, you know, 300 pounds or whatever, and I can throw that up and then I get to a place I can let go and those handles go back and I'm not going to get injured at all. So that increased safety combined with the progressive overload that I can put onto my muscles is huge. And it shows, obviously. And this guy was, uh, the one guy, he's like, what do you mean? He says, you don't do bench? I said, no, you see those hammer strength machines? I do the incline, I do the, uh, the wide, I do the decline on those machines and I load it up. Uh, one of my, <clears throat> it was last year, because I was really pushing for strength, and I went to 500 pounds on a hammer strength uh, bench, wide grip bench. And uh, yeah, 500 pounds. Uh, I wonder if I got that somewhere. I can't remember how many reps I did. I did three or four or something like that. But, it, you know, that was something that I ended up doing. And he was just, you could see the gears grinding in this guy as we're talking. And he's like, well, well, well how do you get big? And it's like... The, the machine, the, the, that thing that's sitting over there that you put, you know, two, three or four or 45 pound plates or, or <laughs> six, eight or 10 of those plates on there. Yeah, you, you can do all that stuff. Now, granted, the weight on a hammer strength bench is not going to be the same as a barbell bench. But again, if we're talking about progressive overload, you're going to go up and all it doesn't matter. The muscle doesn't care if it's a flat bench with a barbell or if it's a bench on a machine as long as there's that weight and that volume and that tension on the muscle group. So, you know, this guy, he younger guy, uh, he was in his 20s, probably about 25, 26 years old. I explained to him the whole process and I was like, see, you can do progressive overload. How much do you do when you do incline bench? Well, I can, you know, I can do the bar and I can throw, you know, at most a couple of 45 pound plates on there. And that's, that's the most I can do. Well, so you're looking at 135 pounds. I can do 270 on the machine over there and even more. And so I'm getting more progressive overload. I'm using more weight. I'm putting more stimulus onto the pecs on the upper chest and I'm working the overall chest as well. Boom. I'm, there's, maybe there's a reason I'm getting bigger. Of course, nutrition and recovery is all being the same. I'm putting more intensity on those muscle fibers and stimulus than he is on his barbell bench on the incline. So, which is basically working the same path, but he's got to do some stabilizers with the reduced amount of safety. Now, am I saying that the incline barbell bench or, or barbell bench is... Uh, inferior to machines? No, absolutely not. I got a lot of my muscle mass in the beginning when I was younger from doing those things. Um, but then studies came out and it showed that, hey, machines and free weights, they produce similar amounts of muscle mass in regards to hypertrophy of all things being equal. So we shouldn't poo on machines like that idiot did that, that, that we're talking about there in that cut and paste post 
because uh, let's see was there anything else on there I don't think there's anything else I'm looking at it now uh, um, yeah so that's what it comes down to and when you start to wake people up it's like well I plateaued and I can't go any higher I can't get any I seem to build any more muscle and so on and so forth and it's like well you've reached a plateau because you've stopped in progressive overload switch over to a machine where you can add more weight you have the added safety and you can do partial reps you can do you know uh, pause reps you can do slow negatives whatever it is you can incorporate all those things to get past those plateaus by using machines and vice versa as well so again it's another tool in the toolbox it's not a free weight versus machine type of argument it's using all the tools available and having them in your toolbox and what I would say to the individual of whoever came up with that stupid cut and paste post um, they don't understand exercise they don't understand that different routines can can build the same results because again we're all we're talking about is stimulus um, you know talking about testosterone through the roof again your total testosterone can raise oh here's the important thing that I forgot here's an alibi how long does that testosterone raise when you do exercise how long does it stay and when does it start diminishing and going back to normal levels which it does okay the original poster did, doesn't talk about that but there are studies that have shown that 20 minutes 20 to 90 minutes your testosterone levels will go down to pre-exercise levels so in an hour and a half let's just round it up to two hours two hours after your workout your testosterone levels are going to go back down to normal that that normal status so is that the time of recovery what happens during recovery when you actually you know 20 you know four hours six hours 12 24 48 hours when the majority well not the majority of all your muscle repair and muscle building happens it's way past that that rise and decline of that testosterone and as we talked about before just because you get a rise in your total testosterone does not mean that you will get a rise in your free testosterone a corresponding rise uh, it's not a locked ratio so yeah there's that um, but these people will never tell you that you know they'll just say oh you need to do compound exercise because it raises testosterone well there are studies that show that that sprinting and endurance running increases your testosterone how come you're not doing that uh, and again they're just taking some some small thing that they heard take it out of context and try to apply it to their pet peeve and you know their pet program or routine that they think is is the bee's knees and the best thing since sliced bread and everything else is inferior without understanding the whole situation or all the variables that come into play <sighs> yeah so you can see why that gets up my nose and in the previous video what I ended up doing was discussing this because somebody posted it and I thought it was a one-off post I thought that person had posted that but then I had seen other people post the exact same post as well with the exact same picture but the picture didn't match the person who posted it so obviously they they just copied and pasted everything including the picture which seems kind of stupid why would you when I can go to your Facebook page and see pictures of you and obviously you're not on steroids you look decent but you don't look anywhere near like the gentleman in the photo why would you copy that post and the photo in trying to get some internet clout I mean maybe there's the possibility that you just posted or shared that as being and here's the thing I haven't seen anybody share this it's always somebody who posted it on their own so they had to consciously go copy paste put it into a post on Facebook then they had to copy the picture and then they had to put that into their post then they had to hit you know had to hit enter and, and boom there it is and it's under their name so it's not shared it's not you know things like that why why is it just to get clout and why would you post a picture of somebody who's obviously on steroids and then you we can go to your page and see that you're obviously not the same person some of them aren't even the same race <laughs> or hair color some of some of them are you know follically challenged 
what what goes through your mind as of trying to pass off this information? Now maybe it's a, maybe it's a joke, maybe it's satire, maybe it's just somebody you know stirring the pot and and just trying to get reactions out of people and to see who can identify the bullshit versus the truth, who's going to confront front the BS and so on and so forth. That's that's entirely possible as well. But uh, yeah, for the most part. I don't see that happening. I see people trying to pass this stuff off and similar things as their own, and they're totally clueless about the facts, so or context or anything like that. So yeah, um, yeah, that's what we got going on. So anyway, I just wanted to, and I'm using Ecam Fitness or Ecam Live uh, program that you know I can do my webcam and plug in a nice. Uh, microphone, my Blue Yeti microphone, and I can kind of, you can see the back is blurred out. I can add pictures and text in the whole nine yards. I'm learning how to do that. So this is kind of cool. Uh, it gives me another chance to, to uh, practice all this stuff and bring graphics on the screen. And I could even run a program or a movie. I wonder if I could do that. What other... see what is it's too big maybe I can throw this on here no that's that's not it uh, da, 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 da. I wonder if I could do a video I bet you I could Let's give this a shot and we'll see what happens. Uh, here is a PR that I did on the Hammer Strength Bench, which was back in July 2023. Or no? No, it wasn't. Yeah. I think it was before that. Or maybe it was July. I don't know. I can't remember. But I ended up, it's when we were here after we moved to Korea, and we've only been here a year, so... Yeah, we got here last October, and then we were here. So, yeah, it was July. So let me see if I can bring this in here. All right. I can. We've got that. The same thing on the other side, 25 and 45. So that's 500. So we're pushing for 500. This is going to be a new PR on the hammer strength wide grip press. I was hyped so we'll about see, this. see what we can do. We're doing a big jump here so let's see see what we can get yeah this was kind of a this is kind of a big thing this is when i was hitting some uh, hitting some plateaus and so i reverted back to strength training to get over some plateaus and uh, yeah we're talking 500 pounds again it's not a 500 pound bench but still it's the most i've ever done for reps and we'll see how many reps we can remember. maybe it's one or two kind of cool. I didn't know you could do videos like that. That is awesome. That is good to know. Um, so yeah, that, uh, you know, is it the end all be all? People will say, oh, well, it's not the same amount of weight on a hammer strength machine as it is on a barbell bench. Well, obviously, but even if you take away, you know, let's see, what do we got here? Let's see, 500 pounds. If we take away 25%, you know, you're still going to drop that by 125 pounds. So, you know, you're still looking at 375, um, which is, that's a good amount of weight. You know, 375 on a regular bench. I've seen, Now, this is just an estimate because I've seen anywhere, well, it's 10 or 15% or 20, 25% less than what you would do on a barbell bench exercise. Uh, there's no real hard and fast rule, but just going to the worst case scenario that it's 25% less, uh, but in even if it's 30% less or 40% less, it doesn't matter to me. It is just a metric and measurement, and I am exercising to the point of where I am using progressive overload to do a weight that I couldn't do before, so it doesn't really matter to me 
on whether it's on a flat bench with a barbell or if it's on the hammer strength machine because it is getting me to a point to get past a plateau and build more muscle in the long run. So there should be some context. I was building muscle, my nutrition was good and so on and so forth, but I was hitting plateaus where I couldn't get more reps, add more volume, whatever you want to look at it, uh, doing more sets. Because of the weight, I got to a point where I couldn't push more weight. So I started doing partials and things like that. So what I ended up doing is dropping down and going back to a strength training where I do four to six reps, adding more weight, having more rest time between uh, my workouts, and then doing that for, what was it, six, eight weeks? I think it was like eight weeks or so. Um, yeah, I think it was like eight, eight to ten weeks, I think. I can't remember exactly. But it was around eight weeks, let's just say that. And then through that time period, is able to push more weights, get more strength, and so then I reverted back to building muscle, and I was able to go past those, those plateaus that I had before. So yeah, if you're getting to a place of where you're getting stuck, try a different goal and go into strength training. Um, you know, there's some other things that you could try. You could go into higher repetitions. Uh, you know, usually for number of sets for hypertrophy is between three and five sets per body part. Uh, the number of repetitions is between six and 12, but you know, there's times where you, you, you could do like, you know, 12 to 15 or 12 to 18, change it up, switch it up. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing saying that you cannot build or get hypertrophy from those different rep ranges. But I have based my routine and what I do, whether it's a full body routine or push pull leg or modified, uh, bro split or the, the routine that I'm kind of doing now, which is kind of, uh, kind of like a, an advanced, I don't want to say advanced, but I do like arms and shoulders on one day and abs. And then another day I'll do chest and back and, and legs or whatever. And then I'll just kind of rotate. And then so I'll do chest and back and legs twice a week. And I'll do arms and shoulders and calves twice a week. But I'll have different exercises on different days. Uh, so <clears throat> to get the best of both worlds. So I'll do some barbell machine exercises, also do some dumbbell work and things like that, but then also do cable machines and, and other stuff. So I'm getting the best of both worlds, in, in my opinion. But I'm not going to say that my routine and what I do is superior to any other routine, because that would be asinine and stupid, and I'm trying not to do that stuff. So anyway, that's what we got going on. I just thought I'd bring this stuff up because I've been seeing that post copied and pasted on numerous fitness pages, and people are passing it off as their own information and then, yeah, confronting the lies and the myths and the misinformation to let people know who don't know. Yeah, that's not how it works. So anyway, and with that said, ah, I am done. So we're going to call this good. Take care. God bless. Keep killing the warriors and we'll see you on the next video. Peace.